Dr. Jonathan Blake, and he's a professor of computer science, and he's going to be speaking on fluency with technology. All right, so I've been uh, sure that I can take 30 seconds before to start to explain my behavior, which I will do now. Um, when I first heard about this, I thought it was a wonderful idea. I was very, very excited to do this. My 60-minute talk as a professor, 60-second uh, 60 talk. 60-second <laughs> talk. Um, it takes me a half hour to say hello, so this was a challenge for me. I was disappointed to hear that uh, I'd been given five to seven minutes. <laughs> Um, so I have decided to give you five 60-second talks. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on. Uh, turn on my little timer. I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but uh, what could go wrong? So I'm going to start with talk number A. Yes, that was intentional. <laughs> talk number A is titled. Technology, um, this is technology fluency. I am using, this is my technology. Technology is not what you think it is. It's a good deal more than that. So, bag of tricks. Let's start out by looking at this. You know what that is? It's a pen. It's a pen. <laughs> this is an example of technology. In fact, I recall fondly a conversation I had with my father, who was talking about the first time he used a ballpoint pen and how it changed the way he took notes and the way he addressed things like the research that he did. This is probably more disruptive than almost everything on your cell phone right now. This is technology, right? This is technology. I have used this to remodel much of my office upstairs. Do not tell facilities. <laughs> this is an example of technology. You know what this is? It's a cordless drill, right? So is this. This is a cordless drill that's approximately 100 years older than the one I just showed you. This one, actually, the battery doesn't ever run out, provided it's, it's, it's given beer and donuts. <laughs> this is another example of technology. Anything else in here? No, for now, I think that's pretty good. So essentially, talk number one. Oh, God, I'm 20 seconds over already. You might tell me these things. Talk number one, my point to you is this. When we think about technology, we often think about what we used to call high technology or information technology. Do not get caught in the rut that says that technology is only one thing, like the phone that says I'm late. Talk number two, entitled, I am a designer, fear me. Right? When you use something, the thing that you use was designed by somebody. Right? The designer of the thing that you're using influences how you use that thing. What is this? Okay, you have to speak quickly because I'm, I'm on a time beat. What is this? It's a mug. What is this? A teacup. What's the difference? Handle. One has a handle. The designer of this particular mug wants you to use it by the handle. So what do you do? You pick it up by the handle. Yes, if your hands are cold, you do this. But it's only rarely usually you just use it by the handle. So why does this particular cup not have a handle? The designer does Asian teacup, right? Japanese or Chinese? The current theory that I like the best is that in Asia, the, the philosophy is that if the tea is too hot to hold, it's too hot to drink. That's genius. What do we do in America? We put handles on things. <laughs> <laughs> and then we sue McDonald's. <laughs> right, now I'm, I'm even farther along uh, than I were before. before. All right, that's good. So what am I saying to you? Everything that you use, everything that you use was designed by somebody. And that includes the apps that are on your phone. You are being influenced about how you use technology every day by the people that have created the things that you're using. It's not a phone. Talk number three. You too can be a hacker. <laughs> yes? What is a hacker? A hacker is not what you think it is. The media lies to you. <laughs> right? The term the media use for a hacker is what we would call a cracker. Some miscreant 12-year-old that stole code from somewhere and is breaking into who knows what. A hacker comes from the 1970s. A hacker is somebody who cares about the way things work and wants to figure things out. Yeah? And so I want you to indulge with your inner hacker. We've talked twice now about the notion of creativity. I'm a little annoyed with Pink because he put up there on his list the three things that are not creative and are in decline, lawyers, MBAs, and computer programmers. He knows nothing about what it is that I do. It's fine. I'm moving on because I have no time. <laughs> so 
So you can be a hacker. What does that mean? That means that you care about the way things work. It means what you want to do is you want to figure out something. You want to take apart the phone and then get yelled at by your parents afterwards when you can't put it back together again. <laughs> Ask your parents about phones that actually plug into the wall. They'll tell you all about it. <laughs> right? So essentially, this kind of technology has changed the way we envision work. You don't look at work the same way that your parents do. You have a computer, you open it up, you play a game for 10 minutes, then you work on a paper, then you chat with your friends for a while, and you play a game again for 10 more minutes. Your parents work from 9 to 5 Monday through Friday, on Friday they go, woohoo, and then they're done until the weekend is over with. To you, there's not much difference between a Friday and a Sunday. That's largely because of the tools that you've used, the technology you use, and how those things were designed. The design of information technology has changed the way you work. It changes who you are. There's an arc to my five talks. Bear with me on this. Talk number four, don't be a backseat driver, all right? There are, again, you talked about consumers and producers. So did you, I think. Two people today, I, I almost changed my entire talk because I was excited about all the things people were talking about today. Producers and consumers, you are all very proficient and facile consumers of technology. But for some strange reason, none of you ever think of yourselves as being producers. But you should. Because if you're only a consumer of technology, then you're forced to use the technology the way the person who designed it created it. You should never settle for something like that. Don't be a backseat driver. People often talk about, uh, I don't need to know how to program a computer. I don't need to know how an internal combustion engine works in order to drive a car. That's crap. That's not the right analogy to think about. Instead, what you should be thinking about is, if I don't learn how to produce with technology, then I'm forced to sit in the backseat with no windows, and the driver can take me wherever he or she plans on. That's not an acceptable thing for you. Finally, talk number five is an unexplained life. Plato's apology, an unexplained life is not worth living. I'm going to challenge you to be reflective about your use of technology, to not be afraid to turn off the device that you have turned on right now. How many of you guys actually have your phones on right now and you just put it into silent because you think, oh, that's just enough? Turn it off. Put it in a drawer. I have a colleague of mine who actually has her students not do any technology at all for 24 hours as part of her course. 12 hours in, she sends an email saying, oh, I forgot. Please send me this, whatever it is. And at least half the class emails immediately say, oh, yeah, thanks for asking me about that. <laughs> she says, what the hell are you doing with your email? <laughs> so I'm going to close. It's five or seven minutes, 652, 653. Crap. All right, <laughs> step number one, my closing comment, be, be proactive, do not settle for tools that somebody else designed. If you're using a tool and it doesn't support the way you want to work, pick a different tool. That, does, that goes for the screwdriver that's too big for your hand, or the app you have on your phone that doesn't quite work the way you want it to work. Don't settle. Number two, you are not the pinnacle of technological awareness. Your generation is not the one that will always understand technology and all the older fuddy duddies that are whatever, they just don't get it, but you will always get it. I have bad news for you, you've already been surpassed by your 12 year old cousin who says things to their friends that you just don't understand. <laughs> you will always be the absolute best at using technology the way you use it, I'll give you that one, but that's all I'm going to give you. <laughs> Finally, I'll close by saying, please, 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 do not think like only a consumer when it comes to any technology. Think like a producer. Take a class, learn how to write a program. Don't become a programmer because clearly that's not creative. Right? <laughs> Try it once, it's easier than you think. My final comment, I have a book that I forgot to mention because I ran out of time for each one of my talks. Read these books. Arnold Pacey, a great book on technology. Herbert Simon on creativity and design. The Hacker Ethic, not what you think. <laughs> Program or be programmed, Rushkoff has some wonderful things to say about the role of that, and of course, Plato's apology. That is it. Thank you very much.